I just got denied by a bank. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through some steps to actually get banks to lend money to you. See, when I hear no, I end up coming up with solutions. And over the last 10 to now almost 11 years of dealing with financing, I've learned some tricks that can help you get banks to say yes to you, even when you didn't think it was possible. So step number one, hide your debts. And you have two choices for doing this legally. The best way to understand this is understand the rule of 234. The rule of 234 is very simple. Every dollar of monthly debt you have, you have to earn $2.34 to qualify for additional debt. So in other words, if you could qualify for $1,999, and you want to qualify for $2,000 of debt, you have to earn an extra $2.34. Alternatively, you could get rid of $1 of monthly debt, freeing up another dollar. But look, if this video was just about telling you that you should have less debt or not take out debt when you don't need it, that would be a pretty boring video because again, I think that's pretty basic. So I'm gonna put aside, don't take out debt and have less debt and pay off debt. And let me tell you the trick. So how do you legally hide your debts? Well, here you go. You open something called an S corporation. And now when you go to finance or purchase a car or take out any debt, like I bought the Tesla Model X and I put my face on it for my business, which is run as an S corporation. I went to Tesla and I said, hey, I would like to purchase this car. You've sold me, I'll buy it. But I want financing in the name of my business. And they said, no problem. However, we will require you to personally guarantee the debt. And I thought, that's okay. So Tesla ended up running my credit for my business and my personal credit. And they gave me a loan for my Tesla Model X in the name of my business. Now, usually I don't like financing cars. This is just a convenient example. And I guess I should mention that I'm financing my car at 1.49%. So like, I would be better off putting my money into a high yield savings account than paying off 1.49%, which is kind of insane to think about. But anyway, let's now say that payment on that Tesla is $500. Well, that means in order to qualify to have that debt, I'm going to have to make $1,170. I basically just multiplied that by the rule of 234. And see, that's where the problem comes out. If I now go to a bank and say, I wanna buy a house, and they run my credit, and they see this $500 payment to Tesla, they're gonna say, oh, well, Kevin, you need to qualify for an extra $1,170 of income per month. But maybe I don't have that extra $1,170 per month. The cool thing, though, about using the S Corporation trick is every single time the banks run my credit, guess what doesn't show up? That $500 in car debt because it's technically a liability of my corporation. It will show up on my corporation's credit report, but not on my credit report. So now even though I'm technically paying $500 a month for this Tesla, the reality is the corporation is paying the $500 per month. I've now hidden that $500 in debt from the lender, and now I don't get hit for that debt. I don't have to qualify for having that debt. So any kind of financing you could take out, whether they're credit lines, personal credit lines, credit card lines, car loans, whatever, anything you could set up under a business is usually going to free up your qualifying ability personally. But you usually need to actually have a corporation to do this. So consider opening up an S corporation for your main hustle or your side hustle to take advantage of this trick. Uh, know that this is the kind of information that you get in my courses linked below. I know courses get that sort of reputation of like, oh, well, I could just Google that information. The problem is you might not even know to Google this information, except that all of this kind of perspective much more is detailed in my courses. So check those out, link below. Also, I've never had a single person tell me that the stuff I share on the course is something they could have just Googled. It's all pretty unique perspective that helps you make money. Okay, number two, I've always gone in thinking, wow, my credit score really, really matters. Well, here's a quick little example that made me look at credit really, really differently. When I was 20 years old and I had bought my first house, I was thinking about, you know, buying some nice quality tools for the garden. So I bought on Amazon a German high quality shovel. 
And I look back now and I'm like, seriously, a high quality shovel? Like, that's dumb. But anyway, I bought the shovel. It was an overpriced shovel. And when I got the shovel, there was a big scratch on it. And I was so upset that I returned it to Amazon. And then I made them send me a replacement shovel. When I got the replacement shovel and there was no scratch on it, guess what I did? I hung it on my wall and I'm like, that is a quality shovel. And it wasn't until one of Lauren's friends came over that I said, hey, check out my shovel that I got. Which is like, wow, Kevin, that's like really, really lame. <laughs> but I don't know, for some reason I was really proud of the shovel. And the person's like, that's cool, so when are you gonna use it? Well, what do you mean? Well, it's obviously not used, it's not scratched. And I'm like, oh, hadn't thought of it that way. So the next few days I got to digging some French drains around my house because I was Always a big fan of saving money and doing work myself around the house. I mean, pretty much did everything on that house. Painted the house, drywalled the house. And then I used the shovel, and by the end of my project, it was super scratched up. And then that's when I realized, wow, my pride was in the wrong thing. My pride was in having a high-quality shovel that looked nice. Now my pride is having a high-quality shovel that looks used because I look at that and I go, that shovel saved me a lot of money. It's something that made me money. And now I look at credit like I look at that shovel. See, a lot of us, we look at credit and we say, well, look at our credit score. It's over 700, it's over 750, it's over 800. Oh, cool, it's a vanity item. It's like that new shovel on the wall. Then there are some of us who are ashamed of our credit and we put the shovel kind of behind the cabinetry so nobody sees the shovel. And then there are some of us who don't even own a shovel. And there's no right or wrong answer here, but the big takeaway from this analogy is realize that in the world of credit, banks usually only require you have a 740 to 760 score, and you're pretty much considered to have perfect credit. You get the best rates, the best terms, the best financing on a house, everything. And realize the reason for that is, guess where banks make most of their money? You think banks make most of their money off senior citizens with 850 credit scores that don't use their credit? No. Banks make most of their money from people who actually use their credit and pay their credit off on time. Most people who use their credit and regularly pay off their credit have scores between 720 to like 810. So once I realized that, wait a minute, the banks are actually okay with you having an imperfect shovel, so to speak, that is like a credit score of like 740 to 760, I stopped making it my goal to have this perfect credit and I actually opened my mind towards shopping around for different credit cards, towards more variety of loans, towards other financing opportunities. And by having that new mindset, I've actually been able to go out and make a lot more money. Now, step three, I want you to legally manipulate your income. All right, at this point, you're probably thinking, no, 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 that's a scam. But you would be wrong to think that. See, here's the scoop. Remember how I started this video off by saying the rich get richer, not because they're somehow evil people, but because they know more? Well, watch this. When I was 18 years old, I bought an iMac for $1,500. And I realized, well, crap, I'm a new real estate agent. If I want to buy a house, because I always thought if I wanted to be a good real estate agent, I should also own real estate, then I wanna make sure I can qualify for real estate. But if I buy this $1,500 iMac, I'm gonna write that off on my taxes through like section 179, and boom, it gets expensed, but then my income is gonna look lower and I might not be able to qualify. So you kinda have this double-edged sword. You save on taxes, but then you can't qualify for loans anymore. That kinda sucks. So what's a trick you could do for your main hustle or your side hustle? You depreciate it. Here's how that works. If I go to my CPA and say, hey, I don't want you to write off this $1,500 iMac this year. I want you to instead write it off over three years. $500, $500, $500. Now, when I go to a bank and qualify for a loan, the bank looks and says, okay, cool. So you made this income. You spent $1,500 on iMac. Oh, but you're depreciating that. Oh, no problem. We'll give that money back to you. In other words, they add back in depreciation. Let me now depict it this way to make it really clear because to me, it's epic. Watch this. Let's say you have a side hustle or main hustle that makes $100,000, but you write off $60,000 in expenses, which means you're left with $40,000 to qualify. Then you go to the bank and the bank's like, ah, yeah, bro, 40,000 bucks. Sorry, like we can't qualify you for what you're looking for. That's because you wrote off $60,000 in business expenses. 
But now on the flip side, the person who knows this trick goes to the bank and says, hey, I made $100,000 in income. I had $60,000 in expenses, but I depreciated those expenses. The bank then looks and says, okay, $100,000, $60,000 in depreciated expenses. We'll add that back in. We'll qualify you as if you're making $100,000 of income. Boom. Now today I went to the arcade with my sons and I realized, you know, sometimes when you put like coins in the arcade, it just doesn't work. But sometimes if you put the coin in at a certain angle or like you tilt the machine, it then all of a sudden works. Because when I say legally manipulate your income, I'm not saying don't pay the arcade machine. I'm saying angle your income in a certain way and you'll actually get what you're looking for. A functioning arcade game and alone. Notice how little information like this where you would have ordinarily never even known to think, whoa, that is something I should consider looking up, could actually make you a lot of money. This is exactly why the rich get richer, because the rich talk to other people who are also wealthy and they learn the tricks of the game. This is why I say legally manipulate your income. You're manipulating your tax situation. You legitimately made $100,000, but you're now changing the way you're presenting it to the bank. You're kind of putting makeup on your portfolio and modifying the way you're filing your taxes. And boom, all of a sudden you qualify for way more than you ordinarily could have. Now, obviously this might be dependent on what kind of loan you're looking for, but for most residential real estate loans, this is a fact. Step number four is kind of a combination of step number two, where I said, hey, treat your credit kind of like that used shovel. The reason for that is in step number four, I highly recommend you shop. When I was 19 years old and I went for my first home loan, I got denied by six different lenders. And it wasn't until I applied with my seventh lender that I actually got approved for a loan because that mortgage broker looked and said, well, here's why you're getting denied at this place, this place, this place. But we have a solution for that over here. And so not being shy about my credit, being open about my situation and then being willing to shop made me realize, wow, I can actually expand my opportunities for actually getting financing. Here's another example of this. A few months ago, I went to Chase and I said, hey, I'd like to you know, inquire about refinancing some of my properties. And within two minutes, they told me, Kevin, we won't lend to you. And I said, wow, okay, why is that? Well, we won't finance anybody's deals that owns more than four residential properties. I go, wow, that sounds pretty dumb because you would think that somebody like me would be your best customer. And they go, yeah, sorry, we have something called an overlay. Now, having been a licensed lender, I was very familiar with overlays, but apparently big banks like Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America have this rule that they can't do more than four mortgages for somebody on residential loans. But you could literally call up pretty much any mortgage broker and you can get up to 10 financed properties. Now, this is where things can get a little niche, and this is something that I talk about in the course, but I actually teach you a trick for turning that 10 finance property rule into 20 finance properties, but that's totally a different thing right now. Right now, what I want you to understand and take away here is, ah, so every different bank adds additional rules, whether they're required to by the government or whether they feel like it for you know their own sake, Every little bank can add their own little rules called overlays and make it harder to get a loan with different banks. Didn't know that. Maybe I should go shopping with different lenders. So if you ever get denied for a loan, you have to ask yourself, is the lender you went to somebody that has a bunch of overlays or are they just trying to pick the cream of the crop buyers who are really easy to work with and then all the other complicated ones get denied? I've always been a complicated loan and I still am today. But because I know this, I shop around and I still get financing. Step number five, one of the big things I realized when I was in the land of Avatar at the Animal Kingdom was you have to build a portfolio. Because when you have no assets, being able to borrow money is very difficult. You could get a personal line of credit or a credit card, and then you end up paying 15 to 25% in interest rates, which is absolutely insane. But if you have a business, you could get a business line of credit. If you have a home, you could get a home equity line of credit. If you have a home that you want to buy, you can get a regular mortgage for that property. And all of a sudden you're paying interest in the range of 3.5 to 6% interest instead of some insane rates like 15 to 25%. The same works for cars, the same works for stocks. 
There's a reason things that are assets, even if they could be volatile assets, that, like cars where they go down in value, there's a reason assets get lower interest rates than no assets. So ask yourself, how can I go out there and get myself some assets? Well, folks, there you have five tricks for getting the bank to actually lend you money. Notice how none of those steps were actually going in and trying to arm wrestle the bankers or being friends with the bankers. It doesn't matter. Follow these five steps and you're much more likely to get loans much faster. Thanks so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram and until next time.